After the last flying lesson being quite frustrating, this one was much better. Again, only one flight in the day. It looked like a beautiful day, but it was really quite windy, and in the afternoon the winds got even higher, so it wasn't practical to go out a second time. The plan, again, was to practice some slow flight and maybe some stalls, but we focused on straight and level flying and turning. And what was better than last time, but I was still finding tricky, was letting the plane get ahead of me. For example, if I was turning left, I would look out all around the plane to check it was safe and then turn left onto the heading that I wanted to go to. But what I'd find is I would overshoot the direction I wanted and end up correcting, turning right slightly to get back on the right heading. So looking from above, I would turn and then point in that direction and then correct and go in the direction I wanted to in the end. And what you're obviously aiming to do is make your turn smoothly so that when you finish turning you don't have to correct at all. And so I did get better with some practice. I would again look out as you always do when you're turning, make the turn and anticipate the heading that I was coming up to before I reached it. And roll out smoothly. And so at the end of the manoeuvre, I was on the right heading. And you can see how windy it is with the little kicks right and left and down after the manoeuvre, which obviously you have to adjust for in flight. And part of the reason I got better was because my instructor went through a system for keeping my eye outside while also keeping a check on the instruments. And after doing that, I was able to divide my time more effectively by looking outside most of the time, but glancing at instruments in a particular order to make sure that I was on track. Now this is a simulator picture, and this is called the six pack of basic flying instruments. The airspeed in knots, the attitude indicator showing if you're pitching up or down or rolling left or right, the altimeter showing you your altitude, the turn coordinator, the direction indicator or the heading indicator, and the vertical speed indicator showing you how fast you are climbing or descending. And so what I learned to do was look outside and then look at each one of the instruments in the central T in turn, looking outside and then at the next instrument uh, until I'd gone through the cycle and was maintaining a good look outside and so on and repeat the cycle while you're performing the maneuver. And so that system meant I was spending most of my time looking outside, but was also spending enough time looking at the dials to keep a check on where the aircraft was and what the instruments were showing to stop me from letting the plane get ahead of me and helping me anticipate what the plane was going to do and complete the maneuver in the right time so that I didn't have to overcorrect. So a good lesson overall. Hopefully the weather is better for the next one and I can finally get on to practicing uh, slow flight, which is important for flying in the circuit around the airfield. Uh, as I understand it, after you do your first solo flight, a lot of the training centers around doing circuits around your home airfield. So looking forward to progressing to that and we'll see how that goes.